Am Alive. It's the Booze and the Dudes Podcast, featuring Ude Udeya, your mom's favorite security guard, Big, and your host, Big Chuck Bucks. Hey, everybody. We might as well have opened up to Super Bad, Super Rad. Super Rad. Hell yeah, dude. I love the Aquabats. Me too, man. Well, I, I would have to say I love that album. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any other albums but that one. Well, I mean, they they provide a good show. My son loves oh, them yeah. to death, so that's why I like them, you know. But uh, we are here, 2000. This is the second episode of 2019. Yeah, man. And I was like, you know, Joe's like, hey, I want to come over. And I was like, all right, well, maybe we'll provide some content for you. And um, we want to bring up a few stories that we missed the last podcast, which was... We um, we actually went to my mom's uh, birthday party <laughs> in Cathedral City. That was awkward. <laughs> and so my mom's, you know, she said, I'm going to buy uh, several Christmas trees. She ended up buying, like, she just started collecting Christmas trees, like, the series fucking hoarders. <laughs> she had, like, 20 fucking Christmas trees. I shit you not. I went to Sears with her. She's like, how much is that Christmas tree? <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't know. I mean... You know, do you really need it? She's like, yeah, I do. I was like, oh, fuck it, it's your money. <laughs> so she just started loading Christmas trees up. So she ended up having like 12, 13 Christmas trees. She put up lights throughout the whole house. It looked like the fucking Mission Inn. But the the lights were only inside the house. Yeah. Yeah. So she's That like, was a nice little place she had. Yeah. And so she's like, oh, I'm going to do, um, this could be a great party. I'm going to have a chocolate fountain. And was there a fucking chocolate fountain? There was a chocolate fountain. Had fucking pineapple. Strawberries. Strawberries. Marshmallows. Um, pretzel sticks. Anything you want to fucking dip in chocolate. Good it was good a spread. good fucking spread. My mom had a good spread. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, she had this customized cake. It was like a princess cake that she must have spent way too much money on. I don't remember. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, no, it was huge. Yeah. Then she had 50 pieces of, like, fried chicken and, that she got. And pizza. And pizza. And, and she had a bar. Pulled pork and a oh, bar. Yeah. And there's beer in a fridge. It was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious that, like, she had a, re- a really nice setup, and there was, like, 10 people there. It, and that's <laughs> it. You know, I guess she did, wasn't specific on the time it started, so we thought when we were going to get there, we are going to set up the DJ stuff, and we were going to fucking blow our mind. And we and we end up going. So this is the story about going. So it's just, I, 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 you know, I contact Richard, and I contact you. I say, hey, listen, guys, you know, go with me to my mom's party. You know, it's going to be a, <laughs> it's gonna be a big deal. She wants a lot of people there. So uh, the problem is, Michelle, at the time, drives my truck, and I oh, think she had God. something going on. She just constantly fucking uses it. I have no access to any of my fucking vehicles of my work truck. And at the time, I'm, dri- I'm driving a work truck that has, like, a camper shell. It's a fucking two-seater in the front, and it's got a camper shell. Like, a, you know, to silk chemicals back there. <laughs> so, you know, basically, U- you know, Uday, and, uh, you know, it decides he doesn't want to drive. You know, because he don't want to drive that far. You know, you don't want to drink and drive. You know, it's, no. a, it's a long distance. So I said, fuck it. Hop in the back. Yeah, Hop I in didn't. The back it, fucking thing. I didn't expect that when I got here. And I'm thinking, like, I actually thought, like, maybe I would just meet you, like, you know, in Ukaipa or something. But, like, you're, like, to come to the house. So I get here, and I'm assuming we're going to take your, your, your personal truck. And then it's like, yeah. you know, it's your work truck. I'm all, what the fuck you mean we're taking that? Well, the funny part <laughs> is, I set you both up. Like, at first, I told. I told you, I said, yeah, if we take him a work trip, we'll just throw Richard in the back. And you're like laughing, like, good idea. And then when Richard got here, I was like, yeah, joke is, we'll just throw him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, good idea. So when you both came, I was like, yeah, you're both in the back. Oh, man, we so, felt like illegals. So, t- so tell me your experience of riding back there. How was it? Well, so like I get here and you, know, you say that's where you're going to be in. I mean, it's like, oh, you fucker. God dang it. And but like I mean like it's it's gonna be a free ride you know have a nice little party so just, just don't bitch don't bitch we get back there and immediately it's just like 
we feel so freaked out because there's no seats, there's no buckles, there's no lights, there's no lights. <laughs> no windows. Yeah, nothing, nothing. And and what's also kind of creepy is that like that door has a little gap in the bottom, so you could see the freaking road. Oh, can you? Yeah, oh. not like not like big or nothing, but like you could see the light coming through and you could oh, see yeah, the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then yeah. you know, you'd hit a, 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 a sharp turn and oh god! <laughs> I got like my foot pressed against yeah. one, oh, the, the, the other side of the of the um, bed, and then I'm like I'm hanging on whatever's like kind of bolted down so that I I'm, just, I'm, I'm thinking these doors are gonna fly and open and it's gonna be like Beavis and Butthead just come on Beavis just just start running really fast. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, that's funny as hell. Because, like I said, I just within that fucking ride, you guys, you guys had like a flashlight and didn't realize to use the fucking flashlight oh, yeah. as a light source yep. until like forty five minutes in, and it's an only an hour trip. So I think on the way back, you guys used like some glow sticks, but like, yeah, we grabbed a bunch fuck. of glow sticks and we're like having our own little party in there. And we had beers, so, which is like. <laughs> We were like, hey, if if, uh, if he gets pulled over, we got you know we gotta fuck with him. <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, were you guys setting me up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you would have fucking. I'd have got fired. I'm like, sure. I would be yes. <laughs> police, <yeah>, police. <laughs> I would whip both your asses. <laughs> I got the ticket. Oh, thank you, officer. <laughs> whip both your asses. Or we got on a fucking spree. <laughs> what was it like for you in the front chilling with a uh, typical Brandon? Yeah, it was fine. We were laughing, but uh, we kind of heard a little bit of you guys back there oh. you know, laughing like little girls, you know, in a, in a tent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, all in all, it was a good party. You know, it, it was a small party, but we end up um, we end up in this jacuzzi. Uh, no, no, at, no, 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 no. There, there's more to this. I want to, I want to get into. All right, not, get not, into, not, get into, tell a story. Well, like. So when we got there, I mean, it was a really nice spread, like you're saying. You know, we see your mom, but like your mom immediately kind of gives us the like, uh, she throws us the curveball. First off, I don't know who that older lady was. I saw her at my work actually, like the other day. I don't think she recognized me, but I felt like she was trying to like give uh, me and Richard the eyes, like, hey. oh, Susie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not even that old. I think she's like a little bit older than us, but fuck, not that much older. But, I can, yeah, well, she's creepy. I can. I have a feeling that uh, she's an old friend of Meth. Oh, yeah, 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 she, big she, time she, recovery. Yeah. yeah. And then all, all that happens. So, you know, she takes pictures with us and whatever. We're having a nice little time. Yeah. But then it's like she takes us aside and she goes, okay, listen, John is not my husband tonight. My mom said that? Yeah. Wow. She, she goes, John has a new title tonight. He is daddy. <laughs> oh, fuck. And, of course, my creepy mind goes to, like, Oh, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. But then she goes like, I've got three guys from POF coming over tonight. The funny part is that it, it really is that kind of thing because she does act a little bratty. Yeah. Yeah. It, absolutely. You're absolutely and John right. Spoils I never her. thought of that. John spoils yeah. her. She calls him daddy. And um, <laughs> hey, I never Brandon. thought of that. What's up, Brandon? Cutie. I'm, cutie. I'm a cutie? No, cutie, you know. Yeah, he calls her cutie. Oh, yeah. I never thought of that until you brought that up. Yeah, just yeah. clicked. But like that's just so like what I I'm kind of curious as what the dynamic between John, the relationship of of John and your mom because like how is it that like she's seeing these other guys in front you know, not behind his back. No. And John's just cool with it and you know, now John's kind of like, "Okay, I'm just going to hide in my uh bedroom for this party while my wife is going to be entertaining some other guy and her family. Well, dude, they straight up have had other guys live in the house with them and do the fucking, you know, like Jeff. Remember Jeff, right? Yeah, with the nose. With the big nose? Yeah. Yeah, he died. But the, that was my mom's boyfriend. She had a husband. I mean, that's the kind of relationship she has. But John was cool with that? Yeah, he's cool with it. He okay. disappears to, like, Laughlin or Vegas. I'm sure to get his fucking rocks off. <laughs> you know, and you can't. The, and my mom to comes to that house. conclusion, and you can't say nothing because you, you've had your fucking fun. All right. You know, it's like I guess you know, every relationship's a little bit different. Some have open relationships. I re I worked with a guy one time. Showed when I two weeks in, started showing pictures of his uh, naked wife to us. Nice. And he's an older guy. He said, hey, it's the pictures of my old, my fucking wife. And I was like, oh, man, oh, that, you know, she looks good. And he shows a picture of naked ones. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I learned later 
that he invites his friends over to fuck his wife <laughs> while he, <laughs> while like he, he watches. watches. And that's a thing. Yeah, it's called uh, cuckold. Yeah, it's just, uh, that's a thing, guys. I, I just didn't see it coming, but what, like, my makeup artist, she's got, she's in a relationship with that, you know, like, she's got her husband, and she's got her boyfriend, and they all hang out together and whatnot. Uh, you know, I got my craziness, but <laughs> I just never thought of John in that kind of situation. Well, here's the thing. There's some people that's just written in, written all over their face. Like you, I could, you know, there's something up. You know, like a, like a guy that's like a look like a vanilla guy. That's like, oh yeah, no, I just have a wife, and you know, there's yeah, people that look vanilla, mm. vanilla, vanilla. Mm. There's people that look vanilla and then have a fucking crazy ass. Might be into like people dumping on their chest, <laughs> fucking feet. Um, all types of shit. And that's a thing. I mean, that's just, it's just fucking human psychology. People are into some weird ass fucking shit. And you don't know. I mean, this could be your next door neighbor. This could be your family member. You know, you, you fucking don't know what kind of shit people are in, but you know, that that's a thing. If that's the, the way that their relationship works, I, uh, more fucking power to you. One time I went to a, uh, an S and M party that was really bad. It was like, no one really showed up, but then I met this, uh, hardcore Dom and his submissive. And it, he gave me the fucking creeps. Cause like, cause he wanted to fucking lick your nut sack. <laughs> he, he wanted, he, I don't know. He, he wanted he, to eat your scrub. He was, he and I started talking about like MMA. So then like, he would just without even like saying like sweetheart, come here and all that. He would take his submissive, this cute little older chick. And he would like put her like a headlock or, you know, he twist her around into a, you know, getting her into an arm bar. And like, he didn't even ask permission or nothing. And she was cool with it. And I remember like when she, uh, when he introduced her, he gave, he gave her his phone and made her show me in my date pictures of them fucking whoa yeah and she, she was like here <laughs> shit one time i sold a car to a guy that was a porn star i don't know if i ever told this story on the podcast nah dude. but there's i sold this car to a porn star and he i had to go back to his house <laughs> to chase for uh uh, a check because you know if you if you don't if you sell a car i used to be in the car business if you sell a car and you and you need to, you need, you know, proof of income or you need a check. You need to go to their house because that <laughs> fucking shit needs to be in the deal the next Were day. Were you inside his house? So he invites me inside of his house. <laughs> and and, I, and did it smell like shit? This whole time, I mean, he kind of tells, you know, more towards the end of the deal, he does, he comes up that he's a porn star. Fine. So he goes and I'm like up and uh, he's like, well, I was just upstairs. <laughs> hey, you want to, okay, I'll go up there. And he's like, yeah. And then he's just showing me his fucking computer. And it's basically just him getting his dick sucked by fucking different types of bitches. Like, one is a black chick just sucking dick. One's a white chick sucking dick. And he's like, yeah, the black chick sucked the best dick. <laughs> and I was like, oh. He's, and he's like, yeah. And then it's just this dude. I'm seeing videos of this dude just getting his fucking dick sucked. <laughs> and, he, and he's shooting in these girls' faces. He's like, that's kind of my thing. I just make... So I'm thinking, like, you just make pornos of you getting your fucking... Your uh, rod sucked. Where did he live? Marietta. Marietta. What do he look like? Just a w older white guy, real tall. Oh man, long hair. Oh, never mind. And uh, <laughs> and uh, he's like, fuck, dude. And uh, he he's like, he he wants some pornos to to get back. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't really need any of that. And he's like, oh, here. He ends up giving me like twenty pornos. And I'm taking back to the car dealership. I'm like, here, guys. <laughs> and the, the, the guy you know, gave all the me cars, a tip. All the, car, yeah, all the car guys start taking the pornos. And I didn't keep any of them. Like, uh, whatever, we're doing. But uh, that's fucking funny because, that, like I said, that's you never know. That's awesome. But he was trying to explain to me. He's like, it's just a job. He's like, I don't think of it as like, I don't think of it as like, um, you know, pleasure or anything like that. It's, he's, it's more like work. He's just like a job, like I'm clocking in. And so, I, so I think of it as he's like, I don't get really anything out of it, or, or I'm not emotionally drawn to any of this. I'm just, I do it as a job. It's a job. Well, I can kind of understand that, but you got to understand, it's probably one of the coolest jobs out there for for the average man. Yeah, getting your fucking dick sucked and making videos yeah. of that's cool. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I told you I filmed porn once, right? I remember when you filmed porn. Oh my god! You told us that about was... it. Showed videos and shit. That... No, oh no, not that one. 
Well, but, tell us, but, tell us your fucking. So I won't say her name, just 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 for uh, you know safety's sake. But um, so what the fuck? Somebody just sent me a Snapchat. I don't know. Anyways, um, so I was dating this girl, and she was kind of very vanilla and passive, and then she starts having sex with me, and I'm a, I'm very aggressive and kind of cavemanish in bed, so. Like a year passes, and she's like, "You unlocked my inner slut." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And she met this guy who called himself Reverend. Mm-hmm. This guy was a fucking douche. Like, I could not believe how douchey this guy was. He told her, "Oh, I know a guy that can film and edit." Mm-hmm. So she asked me to come over, and I meet him. It's her and uh, also her wife, and they're gonna do uh, an S and M video at his place. Okay, and. It was basically just like, you know, them, like, him fucking his wife, uh, her sucking his dick, and getting dom- uh, dominated and stuff like that. It was kind of, the, the one thing that made me laugh, though, is that, like, she goes, oh, I gotta pee. I'm all, do you want me to film it? And he goes, yes, film her peeing. So uh. so she goes to the bathroom, and she's in the shower, and she pisses. And I'm all like, what, what can I do with this? So... <laughs> <laughs> I slow motion the piss to the song Flight of the Valkyries. You know, dun 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 It's more of a comedy. Yeah. But like, you, you know you know why porn is so good to watch and not to film? You can't smell a video. Oh, it shit. Was, yeah, it was just fucking... Ugh. And then the, the, yeah. last, the last video was her, uh, the girl I dated, uh, her having reverend eat a pop brownie out of her toes. Ugh. And like, I'm like, oops, sorry. I'm like, that's, oh, fuck this. This is disgusting. And I had to be like right up in there. Oh, shit. And at one point, he takes milk and pours it down her ankle and just starts slurping it out of her feet. And I'm like, Bleh. That's fucking disgusting. Yeah. When, oh. it, when it was all over, she goes, she gives me a hug and she whispers in my ear. Thank you. No. <laughs> she whispers, we should fuck soon. Oh. And in my head, I'm all, not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Not with his dick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that guy was a fucking douche. He, he would talk to me about, like, uh, collecting swords and gauntlets and stuff. And Yeah. He's a nerd. Kind of. He was, just, he was just annoying. One of those guys that, like, you know, I've got all this cool stuff, and I've got a wife, and now I've got... Look at my stuff. shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, look at my shit. I got Scarface on repeat. All this shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but that's fucking funny, dude. Yeah, I would, I, shoot, I, now that I'm freaking, you know, in my thirties, I got, I don't know, I guess I, I probably do watch too much porn. I watch porn like once a day. Yeah, you probably have to get in relation, in any relationship to kind oh, yeah. of uh, ease back on the porn. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, that's people's jobs. Where I, It came up the other day on a Facebook story. It said, this is the funniest street performer ever. And it was a guy that basically was a statue and, uh, you know, pose with pictures. And I was like, this is not the funniest street performer ever. The funniest street performer was a guy in Vegas that gets kicked in the nuts for 20 fucking dollars. And I don't know exactly how many nuts shots you can get per day or what's his limit per week. Mm. But I do remember watching this. And this guy was like, 20 bucks, kick me in the nuts, no cup. And he, and he kind of did like a like a bang on his ball sack. <laughs> and this fucking big-ass cowboy. And this dude was six <laughs> four, built like a fucking brick shit house. And he's like, all right, I'll give you 20 bucks. And he's with his buddies, you know, probably on a bachelor party or something. But he's got cowboy boots on. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll kick you in the nuts for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, oh, fuck. You know, like, you know, at that point, like, you know. At that point, he realized I, you, he fucked up. He realized he fucked up. But it also, like, you're thinking to yourself, like, how much does your fucking life suck where you have to hold up a sign that says, kick me in the nuts <laughs> for $20? You could be. We could be at our job sitting in a truck and not do nothing for an hour. We're going to make about the same amount of money. This guy's about to get the abuse from this <laughs> guy. That's you get kicked to... in the nuts one too many times, you, you're you going to fuck up your balls. You're going to fuck up your balls, but there's some. I guess there's some people who can take a nut shot. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how this guy developed it. But this guy, 
you know, pays the 20 bucks. And he said, all right, I'm going to kick you the nuts. You know, and these fucking other cowboy fuckers are like, yeah, yeah, do it. I'm just watching like a fucking train wreck about to happen. You know, you can't turn away. It's kind of like a car accident. (laughs) And this fucker just winds up and, and, you know, winds up the kick, takes a step back and bam. And this dude just hit the fucking floor. This isn't a nice fucking kick. You got to think it's a it's a it's a steel cowboy boot that even if it hits you in the fucking gooch, it's not damn near gonna pierce your fucking scrotum. Man. Scrotum, man, and it just fucking dropped this fucker. And he was just, oh, they're all okay, man. He's like, oh, all right, <laughs> but this fucker <laughs> didn't get up for like thirty fucking minutes. <laughs> and I'm sure like he's taking like. Other nut shots, maybe, and survived them. It's like, yeah, I could take three, four of these light nut shots. But this fucking guy was like, you know, huge. <laughs> <laughs> like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> oh fucking my just God. fucking waffled you in the fucking nuts <laughs> with the <Waffled> steel toe <laughs> fucking boot. But like I said, it's just how fucking much does your life suck when you got to do something like that, man? It's just, uh, you know. You're not dressing up as drunk Mickey. You're not fucking um, what other, you know, you're not uh, Darth Vader. When you got no money for a costume, you're going to hold up a sign that says, kick me in the nuts for 20 bucks. There, so I don't know. Vegas has got some crazy, Vegas has some really cool stuff out there, but Vegas has also got like some weird shit. Like Vegas is kind of like. It's like a one gigantic fight club because everything's secret. There's like, oh no, you know what? It's like eyes wide shut out there. Yeah. Because you can like go to like a, just a regular a casino hotel and you'll pl- go gamble, and then maybe you'll go to a show. But then like if you actually look hard enough, you'll find like you know like guys uh, you know who who jerk each other off uh, for twenty bucks. Oh yeah. You know. And- well, you could walk around and get approached by a hooker every day. Every day, my buddy did. And he thought he was good looking with nice shoes and fucking. And he's like, hey, man, this girl likes me. And then like, no, man, <laughs> she's a hooker, you fucking moron. But, um, I mean, you know, like I said, it just fucking, I guess it is what it is. And people do crazy shit for money. It's a hustle. It's a, That's why I don't like Vegas. I like Laughlin a little bit more than Vegas. Um, and I'll tell you my Laughlin story when we come back over these commercial break. But... Um, like I said, it's Vegas is just a big giant hustle. Yeah. Everybody fucking hustles in Vegas and it's from, from everybody wants a piece of theirs. And that's why I can only stand maybe a weekend there. I can't be there anymore in two days. Yeah. It's like eating cake and ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> that's actually a really good analogy. That's how it is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly it. You can't get like a home cooked fucking meal when you're in Vegas. You, you can't have- get a home cooked meal and it's like cake, ice cream, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, mm, this is really, mm, this is, Okay, fuck, this is really good, but fuck, it's really making me sick. It's uh, like pancakes. They're all exciting at first, but, but but then by the end, you're fucking sick of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Vegas. But uh, like I said, we'll take a commercial break. We'll be back with headlines and my story of Laughlin, more booze and dudes. Get ready to listen to the SGR Podcast featuring some guy. Here's what you've been missing. Hey guys, it's me, uh, some guy, uh, wow, uh, <coughs> uh, let's go in, let's get into this, um, uh, 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 a feeling or strong, constant affection for a person, attraction that includes sexual desire, um, oh man, what was I saying there, oh yeah, that's, that's actually, that's actually from the dictionary, um, that was just a preview of the SGR podcast. Only on Podbean. <laughs> well, now, we call this the act of mating, but there are several other very important differences between human beings and animals that you should know about. We're back. I appreciate it, but boom. This is a song. I thought that was like loop or something because that bump was going forever. That song reminds me of the skating rink, and I never knew how to skate. I just went there and they played that song. 
The one in San Bernardino? I uh, no. This was in San Diego. Oh, okay. It's very fitting that you played that too, coincidentally, because as you know, I had sex tonight, and I actually just had to turn down more sex. Jeez. Yeah, I feel kind of bad. You're done with sex. You want a relationship, right? Yeah. We're going to get you a relationship. I was... T- <laughs> Dude. What, ha- what happened with... What's her name? Zana. Your, your Dude, I know. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. <laughs> she says... She's like, uh, she, he, Joe keeps on hitting me up. I, I don't know if I should block him. <laughs> really? Yeah. Damn. Hit me up? Fucking she told me to call, text her. She texted you that? She She gave me her number and said, text me. Yeah, that night, but after that, you just kept on texting her. Mm-hmm. And she... I would hit her like once a week. I because I didn't want to be that guy. Yeah, well, she says like, oh, he keeps on liking my page, and uh, I blocked him. <laughs> I blocked him from Instagram, and he keeps on bothering me with the bullshit. Toxic. That's what I heard from Michelle. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, yeah, maybe you just want to. I'm deleting all that shit now. Fuck. That's what I would do. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. You can't put the pussy on the pedestal, bro. Dude. It, you know, that's what girls do. They talk, you know, they think they're like, oh, you know, they think of this shit, but that's, that's what I was told. I that, don't know. No, that really pisses me off because I, did, I try really hard not to be that guy. So <laughs> I hit her up like, I hit her up once. She she replied back and I was like, uh-huh. hey, how's it going? Yeah. And I never heard from her again. Yeah. So then I, let, I, I, I messaged her like, I'm going to say maybe twice a week. So like oh, went from once a week to twice a week. No, you're, no, yeah, no, you're no, a little no, 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 no. I'm saying like I would say hello once a week just to be a nice guy. I never did anything else. I I said hey, I because I have your phone number. Uh, my fa- I found you on Instagram. I was gonna hit follow, and that was it. <clears throat> yeah, she don't want she want nothing to do. That's f- fine. I'm just delete it. I I am. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I do. I see. You just crushed your soul. No, dude, bro. you crushed my soul. You pissed me off, dude. Hey, I'm just being. I, tell, I'm not, no. I didn't do anything. I know you didn't, but that pisses me off because I tr- I didn't want to be that guy. But yeah, like, well, you're that you're that guy. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it right now. Actually. Yeah, you're that guy. Sorry. Fuck you. I'm sorry, buddy. You know I don't fucking take joy in that. You know I don't take joy in that. You know I like to. I thought she had a good personality. She was cute. I thought it'd be great for you. Yeah. You know, but fuck. That's what, I'm just I'm just relaying the message, but I probably shouldn't have even said that. Sorry. No, nah, it's okay. I'm gonna. Wow. Yeah, she did block me. <laughs> wow. I that, that's just verification, bro. That's cool. <coughs> that's cool. I guess it ain't for you. That's fine by me. I I don't know. I don't know well, her. Don't get all angry now. No, I'm not. I'm getting all vengeful. Well, I'm I'm getting calm. I'm gonna calm down. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, calm fuck down. I'm deleting her number. God, Coco, you sting like shit. <laughs> fuck. Where is yeah. the delete exactly? Yeah, one time, girl. You know, cute girl. I made out with. You know, uh, at a at a, a bar. And then she gave me her number, and I hit her up, and I was like, "Oh, hey, what's going on?" I was, you know, she would reply back a few times, but I just. It was more like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm just busy. Okay, yeah, I'm good. Delete. 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 Um, so I was like, well, okay, fuck it. And she was, fun, you know, fucking cute. But, you know, it's what it is. It is what it is, man. Fuck. It is whatever. Fine. Uh, so tell us about your um, sex capade. Which one's done tonight? Tonight. <laughs> The grodiest of sex that you could probably have. Is yeah. Like, yeah. Inside a car, inside a box, <laughs> inside a tent. What are we talking? So, like, it's this older chick that I I met. Uh, older as in, like, 10 years older than you? Yeah, about 10 years older than me. She's in her 40s. And That's not completely disgusting. I mean, when you get over no, in the no, 50s. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, she was cool. And uh, yeah. she wanted, like, rough sex, and she wanted to be treated like a slut and this and that. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's you know like she basically she wanted the old school grody sex because it's it's so funny when you're when you're a kid you have nowhere to fuck yeah, yeah. you'll you'll go wherever you can yeah of course you get older now you got your you got your own place you got a bedroom you can, you know can you can fuck in the bed but then when you get older there's something about just grody sex it's kind of like it makes you feel young again mm-hmm. so what we did like we <laughs> we were at you know there's that house. Um, by the museum in Redlands, that old old house you have like weddings at and stuff. Mm-hmm. 
went there one time and she gave me head. And then it's like, we're going to go there again tonight. But it was too lit up. So I said, like, hey, I know a spot. And we went to, uh, it was a 98.7, the radio station. Okay. And it looked all abandoned. And we're like, oh, and it's nice and dark. Oh, where's, uh, in what what city? Redlands. It's, oh, but it's, I know it was exactly a, what you're talking about. Across, like, okay, you know how there's uh, Pharaoh's Lost Kingdom? Yeah, yeah. And there's, like, the Mill Creek thing over there? Yeah. Uh, right over there. Yeah, that's where we were at. There was a, there's two radio stations over there. One, okay. of, one of them looked straight up abandoned. I was like, but it's a radio station. They have people there, but it looked crazy abandoned. And then we went around the corner and like, oh shoot, there's parking spaces that are, are hidden. We can yeah. Do right there. So we're making out and whatnot, and I'm you know we're I'm filling her up and shit, and then it's like bend over. Mm-hmm. I pulled up her dress and pulled out her, her panties and did the old one two. And like I'm like, take this fucking load, you slut, you fucking whore. Yeah, she liked it. Oh, she was fucking. I <laughs> what <laughs> the waterworks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no, but, you little and, slut. And this is like, I got my pants just around my ankles, and uh, <laughs> I got my pants around my ankles. You know, my my ass is hanging out, and she's got her ass outside. And meanwhile, she's like got, got her parking brake in front of her face. <laughs> Oh, shit. And I'm just going away, and and then it was kind of like, she she says, "Fuck my ass." I was like, "Oh, okay." So, by the way, this is a by the way, this uh podcast is brought to you by uh, KB Toys in Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so who's there? Shut the door. No kids allowed. No kids allowed tonight. So, uh, she had a very Puckery, as we'll say. <laughs> yeah, her asshole's like, Mero! <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, instead yeah. of saying words, it would suck it in, like, you know, like, hey, I want to fuck you. And, I want to fuck you. like, well, you breathe in it. <laughs> I want to fuck. <laughs> yeah, when, when, I, when I opened her ass cheeks, she said, Zool! <laughs> yes, Zool. Zool, motherfucker, Zool. Yeah. And then. <laughs> He's like, give me that dick. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm going at it for a little bit. I'm freaking out, too, because I could start seeing, like, lights come by. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. But no one showed up, and when I and I finished on her butt like she asked, uh huh. And then like you know we put our stuff on, put our clothes back on, and dropped me back off of my car. And I'm like, I don't want to go home just yet. Hey Chuck, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, an ex of mine just texted me, and I guess she was under the assumption that I was going to come by her place tonight and give her some D. I really didn't want to. Fuck. I really didn't want to. Yeah. And she's she's not she's mad she's like you 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 said you were gonna come over and fuck me. Do you yesterday. feel like a piece of meat sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. It's how do you feel? Like how do you? Feel? I don't think I've ever really interviewed you. <laughs> like how do you feel emotionally? Like where are you stand right now? Like when you go to these, you know, is it still like exciting for you, or is it like routine now to, uh, you know? Fuck, the, fuck these chicks. Like, is it routine? No. Is it like, what is it? I mean, how do you feel emotionally? Well, when I'm when I'm meeting somebody that I know it's just sexual, it's you know it's it's a good thing. I wouldn't say that I'm like uh, depressed or, or anything, uh, but at the same time, I'm not like yay. I'm I don't I don't see. Okay, I'm I'm a part of like the kinky uh, community, and for me, it's about exploration. You you can actually learn a lot about who you are by how you are in bed or how you are around the opposite sex or the same sex when it comes to say competition stuff like mm-hmm. that. And when I meet these people, that it's just kind of more of a of a sexual thing. Uh, it's fun. It is uh, kind of cool, but I definitely wouldn't say it's like the highlight. Do you think like the highlight like? Do you think when you like you thirst on new blood and there's new people in you know in your every once in a while that you're like that you get that same spark like you're excited and renews your excitement every or once is while. it like because like fucking the same chicks could be routine you know emotionally too you could be more emotionally detached um, but like what I'm saying is like if yeah if you see you know if you get somebody new like you know are you like hey they're you know. There could be something here more to it, or like, I, or you kind of need that new, that new puss to stay to stay excited. No, I don't need new pussy to stay excited. No, but I mean, like, cer- there are certain people that I still hook up with where I'm kind of like, oh boy, I get to have sex with you again. Yeah, 
like uh there's this girl I know call her E. Mhm. Uh she's like 22. Yeah. Ginger with big boobs and she's kind of got that daddy fetish thing going on so yeah. like when when I get to hook up with her which is kind of rare it's like oh I am in heaven because this is like just crazy hot and she's she's not like sexy but she's got a very uh kind of like off cuteness to her I got gotcha. you. Is there like uh, you have any emotional det- attachments to anybody that you're like doing now that like, you, hey, I see myself in a relationship with this person? Mm, kind of. I mean, like Raven, like I've known her for like it's like six years now. Uh huh. And, you know, her and I are just friends th- with benefits. But I mean, like every once in a while, I kind of feel like we skip into an. Em- we do have some emotional connections. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like mm, maybe. Maybe I'll take her out like on a real date or something like that. But she was just like, no, nah, I don't see that for us. I'm like, okay. As long as, you know, she's honest with me. Yeah. And she likes hanging out with me. So I know it's not like she's like, it's like a pity fuck or some shit like that. So it is like a friendly fuck. Yeah. Friends with benefits. Yeah. That's funny. All right. So there's a story that, like I said, a long, long time ago. I want to hear this. Yeah. I don't know if you, I think you, no, I don't know if you've ever heard this story. But anyways, uh, me and my buddy, we went to, um, we got invited to Laughlin. We went to Laughlin. It was a very, you know, I was very young. I was like 20. I had to be 20, 21. Something like that. Very young. And I went to Laughlin. And uh, we get there. And I'm like, dude, there is nothing but fucking old people here. This place sucks. And I love it now because I'm older. You know, I love it now. <laughs> fucking it's more slow pace for me. But I get there. And um, I was like, let's go to a fucking strip club. And we look up <laughs> strip clubs. In Laughlin. And there is no strip clubs in <laughs> Laughlin. You know, the closest strip club we find is in Bullhead, Arizona. And I forget the name of it. It was called, um, I don't know, some maybe Showgirl, something like that. And we get, and we go to the strip club in Laughlin. And me and my buddy go there. And <laughs> it's like, it's I don't think it was daytime, but it was like 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock. It, it, there was still some daylight out. Mm-hmm. And there's like two dancers, and the place is fucking <laughs> empty. And then you know, you walk in there like, oh fuck, you know, hey, pay the fees, fifteen, fifteen, twenty bucks per person, whatever, and they get their money. And there's this girl there, she's dancing, but she doesn't really. I mean, when you're when it's that slow in a strip club, if you've ever been to a strip club, if there's only fucking a handful of people there, there's not, they're not dancing on the pole. They're just gonna go straight to you, and they're gonna ask for. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the most annoying part of a strip That's show. so fucking annoying. So this girl, you know, she's like, ah. I was like, okay, cool. I'll have a dance with you. And we hit it off and like, okay, no problem. Um, hey, um, can I, can I get a, can I get a ride back, uh, to Laughlin? What? what? Yeah. My shift's ending right. This is actually my first day <laughs> and my I need a, ending. I, I need I Punch need <laughs> I need a fucking uh, um, uh, ride back to Laughlin. So I looked at my buddy and said, like, "What the f- what the fuck?" Um, I guess I guess I can give you a ride. I mean, you know, and we we're like we we're about to leave that fucking place anyways. It was fucking depressing. So she gets in she gets in me and my buddy in the air shotgun and she's in the back and we're driving down and she's like. Actually, no, no. We leave the we leave the club, and she's like, "Hey, hey, hey!" <laughs> she, we try to leave her. Oh! But she's she said, "Hey, hey, hey!" I was like, "Oh, hey, yeah." I was just pulling to the, the side. <laughs> so she got, yeah. So get in the back, get in the back, whatever. So we're cruising down, and it's not that far distance from Bullhead, Arizona, to Laughlin. But we're you know we're is driving. Is Laughlin in Arizona or is it in California? Laughlin is Arizona, okay. or no? Laughlin's Nevada. Oh, okay. Arizona is Bullhead. Yeah, okay. Bullhead. And they're right across. They're separated by a river, the Colorado River. Okay. So she starts talking about her abusive uh, boyfriend. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. He um, he just he's in jail now, and then um, you know them. I live with my uh, grandma, but my dad abused me too. And sometimes I get really depressed, and I cut my wrist. And then she starts showing her wrist, and there's, like, scars on her fucking wrist. She's not making <laughs> this shit up. And then I looked at my buddy, and I was like, 
holy fuck, bro, this girl's going to fucking kill us <laughs> on the ride back. I said, she's going to fucking murder us. And I was like, what do we do? And he's like, oh, um, uh, I don't know. So we go back to Laughlin, and then she she's hanging out with us. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, dude, fuck off. And I run into my parents. My parents are there, you know, because they, they invited mm. us. And she's like, um, who's this? I was like, oh, uh, I don't know. This is, you know, a girl we met at a club. And she's like, yeah, yeah. So there's music going on at the riverside. Mm. And this bitch decides to fucking start doing the worm on the dance floor. And starts dancing, right? Like mm. crazy dancing. <laughs> like pole dancing. It's fucking hilarious. All the people, are, all the old people and my parents are getting a fucking kick out of it. They're laughing their ass off. You know, behind closed doors, I'm telling my mom the whole fucking story. And she's cracking up. And then so I start leaving. I'm like, fuck this bitch. We gotta fucking leave. <laughs> and she sees us. She's like, you're not leaving me, are you? Oh. And I was like, oh, fuck. No. So, no. Uh, no, no, no. And I was like, um, Tom, we gotta make something up. <laughs> and he said, yeah. I said, yeah, bro, we need to make something up. So I he makes up this story on how we have to go to DMV in California. Uh, it was either, no, 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 it was a court case. So he, 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 we have a court case, and I need to get him to the court case in the morning, and we need to leave now. Oh, I'll just go with you guys. No, 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 no. We need to leave, we're leaving now, and we're not, you know, we're not taking you. you know, we're not, we're not going to take you. Oh, oh, uh, we just fucking jam. We just jam. She buys it, and we just jam out, okay? That's the end of that story, but that, here's the trippy part. Two years later, two years later, I'm in the car business, and I sell this family a car, and I seen something like with Laughlin, there was a keychain or something, and I tell them the story, and you know what they tell me? What? My son... Met the same girl, <laughs> and she wanted to go home with us. Uh, wait, 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 home? She wanted to go home with us. Met the same girl, described her to a T. It was exactly the same girl, and it was the same fucking at the Riverside, too. And explained the whole fucking story, and I said, holy shit, what are the fucking odds? <laughs> What are the fucking odds? But when, when when they say like home, like home for the night, or like live with them, or like I don't know, live oh with them maybe because oh she was talking about her abusive dad and her <laughs> fucking boyfriend was in prison and she cuts her wrist and I seen the scars on her fucking wrist. Was she cute or sexy or anything? Or? Yeah, all the crazy ones are. Yeah, <laughs> but um, no, that story seems almost made up. It's so fucking crazy. That's the crazy part. Years later, two years later, I talk about it with a customer, and they, they said their son ran into that same <laughs> fucking chick that wanted to go home small with Small world. Fucking small world. Yeah, she was notorious then. When, uh, when, when me and uh, uh, Abel were in Oregon wrestling, the hotel that we were staying at was like, across the way from a strip club. And it was like, come on, guys, let's go, let's go to the strip club. Yeah, let's go. And... You know, like at this time, at this point, I'm like 26, 27. I'm like, I don't really do strip clubs anymore. Like, what do I, you know, I, I have yeah, porn. <laughs> exactly. Like, you don't go to strip clubs anymore. But, uh, like, the whole idea was that, like, no, we're not going to go tonight, but we'll go tomorrow after the show. Okay, guys. And then he's telling all these workers about, all these wrestlers, about he's going to go to the strip club in Salem uh, off of uh, the, um, the place was called the Shylock Inn. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, don't go. And he's all, why? And he's just like, you you, you wouldn't like our girls. So then, you know, he comes to me and, you know, the rest of the boys are like, hey, man. So, like, they they say we shouldn't go to the strip club. And, and I, <laughs> Who said that you shouldn't go? The wrestlers in Oregon? Yeah, the, yeah, the Oregon wrestlers. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, I just I go to go, Abel, when the locals are telling you not to not to trust their, their taste in strip, strippers, yeah, I would take that bet. And he was right because then I did <laughs> – so you went anyways and no, no 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 I did a meet and greet after after the show, and my God these fans looked like fucking aliens. Uh, there was this one guy legit. Hey, you guys are <laughs> the best wrestlers ever. It was it was crazy. This guy had like two big wide eyes like the fucking oh, grays. Wow. And I was like, 
Are you part of some sort of hybrid experiment? Yeah. No, I thought you were a good wrestler. <laughs> I know, it's creepy. That's fucking creepy. Yeah, so and you know, I think we spent I think we spent too much time uh on s- strippers back when we were with Jeff. Oh, dude, we used to go to the fucking strip club all the time. He would spend several For those of you out there dollars. listening, yeah, for those of you out here that are listening, strip clubs are not really where it's at. No. I mean, you know what you know what strip, strip clubs do now is they uh hire porn stars to come there like, you know, as a special event. Dude, I was at a strip club one time. Um Back in the days, and I was, dude, I was super young. I was like 18, 19 years old. And this porn star was, um, it was at the Spearmint Rhino. Yeah. And it was the feature of porn star. Okay, cool. So for like 10 bucks, you got to sit in this chair and take a picture with the porn star. And she would show like her titties. Mm-hmm. And it was like a little, like a Polaroid <laughs> that got printed out, right? Yeah. So that was for 10 bucks. So I got one of those. I had I had I had the picture for a while. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. I oh, think I threw it away. I have a good but, stripper uh, story. Let me tell you. Go, 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 go. So I um, for I was like, okay, cool. And I'm you know, like I said, I'm not the I'm not the guy that sits there and is super quiet. I'm the guy that kind of claps after yeah. a good dance. Like no, Woo! no, remember uh, good job. passion? Remember passion? Yeah, passion. Three, two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Dude, passion. Passion was like forty something. Yeah, almost fifty years old. She looked good though. She looked good. And she was like one of the last strippers. She got to be in her sixties now, seventies. She's probably dead. <laughs> Let's face it. So, fucking, you know, she but, was probably just so, like thirty five or something. And you're like, yeah, like fifty. 60. No, dude, she for sure was in her forty, fucking nah. late forties. Absolutely. But let me tell you, anyways. Like I said, the porn star. So the porn star uh, was on stage, and she has a remote control car. With a, I was there. You were I there. Remember. Yeah. Okay. She has a remote control car with a fucking uh, dildo attached to it, right? Yeah. Remember that? And yeah. so, I can't believe you were there. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, she was Asian. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, she was. Asian. Oh yeah, yeah. I think so. And she's like, "Hey, who wants to fucking drive the remote control car in my pussy?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Me, me, 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 me. Pick me. Yes." And I get picked, right? And she's like, okay. And then I end up fucking like maneuvering this car with the dildo attached right in her pussy. But like it like kind of hits like a pussy wall and I jam it <laughs> like full throttle. And it's like more hurting her than it is penetrating her. Oh. She's like, ah. <laughs> ah. Uh, and um, I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, fuck. And I'm getting a fucking super kick out of this because the thing is. Who the fuck can tell you that story that they drove a, a, a remote control with, uh, you know, dildo right into a girl, a, a porn star's pussy? It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I actually, I did. T- oh, she also did one of those things where, like, I think she put like a little hoop around her pussy and you threw a ball in. Cause, oh yeah, because I won a videotape of her. Yeah, and it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just her dancing and like pouring hot wax on herself. It was stupid. Yeah, man. yeah, I remember. Dude, that was, I can't believe you were there. Yeah, that's funny as fuck you were there. We spent so much time with Jeff going to porn, going to strip clubs. It was ridiculous. Damn. Remember, he'd be like so excited. Man, we're going to see some titties. It'd be awesome. Da, da, da. Dude, so yeah. Jeff would be there like past fucking, Close. okay, closing. Closing is like 2 in, two in the morning. Yeah. The only fucking suckers left are people getting dances. Mm-hmm. And this fucker was getting dances clearly after 2 in the morning. This is where he would spend an additional like $500. He spent like yeah. $700 per trip. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I think she likes me, bro. No, no, she doesn't. No, I don't think so. But there was this stripper named Candy. I remember her. The redhead, right? Redhead. And, you know, she took a liking to us. And, in fact, I think Jeff spent so much money on her, you know, that she took us to breakfast. Did she? To Denny's. I remember. Well, I knew. Yeah. That, I knew that she knew Jeff because, like, one time she was dancing, and Jeff was up front, and I, I hear her go, "Hey, Jeff." Yeah. She she's like Jeff. Well, you know, I said whatever. I uh, fucking know. I don't have a whole lot of money, so I'm like, I know I just went there because you know sometimes Jeff would just pitch in for it, whatever the case yeah. be. Um, but she took us to Denny's and then uh, paid for our breakfast. I was like, that's fucking hilarious. The stripper fucking <laughs> used a rebate to fucking pay for uh, our Denny's Pulling breakfast. Pulling out all her ones. Yeah, and, and then so we went back to her house and she was trying on sexy outfits and I was like, what? All right. Okay. And she said like, oh yeah, now my boyfriend, um, he's bisexual. And I think he tried <laughs> to get convinced Jeff that like to suck her boyfriend's dick nice. and fuck her. But I don't know if he ever did it. 
I couldn't tell you the story. He probably did. <laughs> and uh, But uh, that was hilarious. Says that she paid for our breakfast and we went back to her house and then she tried on these outlets. She was cute. Oh, yeah. She I tried on these outlets. But she obviously, you know, not everything's clicking with any of these strippers, man. They got a <laughs> fucking troubled, a troubled fucking childhood or something came from <laughs> for that occupation. I don't know. I haven't. Most of these girls say that they're going to college, and you know that's a myth. That's a myth. But um, I don't know, man. You got a good, you got a good stripper story? Yes, that's, yes, that's I a do. Few Go Did ahead. I ever tell you the Miss Elizabeth stripper story? Uh. Uh-uh. Okay, so back in the day when the NWA was kind of out here for the most part, there was a, a house called the NWA House. Okay. And the guy that ran it was always trying to get wrestlers to 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 move in so they could basically uh, make the rent cheaper. When you think the NWA House, what do you picture? Like a house for wrestlers. What do you picture? Oh, a bunch of fucking sweaty dudes and fucking, it smells like fucking feet. <laughs> and uh, when pizza I, boxes and beer cans. When I, it kind of, you know, like, almost like a fraternity, right? Like a fraternity, yeah. That is not what this fucking place was. It was uh, a townhouse across the street from the Little Caesars off of Highland and E. Okay. It was fucking terrible. And the guy that ran it was that Vander Pedophile. Uh-huh. And that's why, he, that, I thought he was trying to get me to move into the house because he wanted me to like, you know... Up, you know, be you know, you live here, you're gonna be around the business 24 7. No, he just wanted fuckers to move in so he could his rent would be cheaper. So that's where out, uh, out, out of state or out of country talent came to stay when they were uh, gonna do the NWA because in LA, LA was the only place that had any, uh, it went from uh, Florida where TNA, remember if TNA was TNA NWA? Yeah, that's where the end, that's where the title went. Then they left in, uh, TNA and they went back to California because that's where California was getting the most attention. The NWA belt basically just went where the most attention was, um, and that's where outside talent came from. That's where uh, Carl Anderson stayed. That's where Mikey Nichols and uh, Shane Thorne. They're in uh, NXT right now. They're I forget what their name is, but like that's where a lot of these guys stayed. Mm-hmm. And there was a manager called Benny English that came with them. And he was a cool guy. Uh, apparently, he doesn't like me now because he thought that like I was making. He he knows the uh, the girl that I might go to visit. He knows her. Okay. And he might. And he thought that like I sent a picture of her, me and her, to like make him jealous. But that wasn't the case. Anyway, I'd say Benny, you're in you're in California, United States. You know, you're a young guy. I'm gonna take you to a strip club. Oh, cool. And I'm thinking like we're gonna go on a Saturday. Then I get a call from Vander Pedophile on a Tuesday or something. I heard you're going to take Benny to, to the boys to a strip club. Uh, yeah, Saturday. Fuck that. We're going tonight. Okay. I take them <laughs> to Spearmint Rhino. Uh-huh. Yeah. They get a look at the place from the outside. They're like, no. Uh, Vander Pedophile's like, we want to go someplace raunchy. And I'm like, well, I don't really do like strip clubs like a lot. The only, the only other place that I really know of that's got like a bad reputation is Club 215. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, take us there. I'm like, okay. Take us to that one. That place legit was like a barn with a fucking stripper pole in the middle. It was terrible. <laughs> oh, I've been in that place, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. And we're there and this and that. Now, you think passion was old? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. There was this girl there. She was so old and wrinkly, she looked like a lizard. <laughs> legit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I got in like I I got a, a private dance, but there there's no rooms, so like the private dance is like around the corner. <laughs> They're watching me and whatnot. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, what's up, dude? You just saying good night? All right. It's almost nine. Yeah, I love you. Good night. We're telling stories. Oh, what? Oh, you took a picture? She 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 said, "Let's take a picture." You're such a sucker, dude. I know. So that's kind of like yeah, bullshit. Yeah, like that shit. Like, anyways, finish your story. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah. Um. Where was I? All right. So yeah. Like, I get a lap dance, and it's so like this is just bad. I'm like, ugh. You know, I can even see the guys like staring at me because like you literally all you have to do is do this number. Yeah. Yeah. That security guard. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, where I got the lap dance. Oh, okay. Was this this couch. Yeah. And, like, the girl's telling me about, like, her kid. I'm like, oh, this is really getting me oh, hard. Oh, fuck, yeah. So then... Uh, yeah, I got two kids at home, and I just do this, you know. Yeah. Oh, do you have a boyfriend? No. Are you married? No. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, I remember that one story. Are you? The... No. Um. So... Yeah. No. So I get back, and then, like, we see the really old stripper. 
like she easily w- was like in her fifties to sixties, and it's just, it's just uh I'm I'm sorry, but this woman like should have stopped stripping twenty years. She ago. She was a reptilian. She was. She really was. <laughs> <laughs> Bring English her goes, out. <laughs> Betty English goes, it looks like Miss Elizabeth climbed out of her grave and started stripping. Oh, yeah. It gets even better. It gets even better. He goes to the bathroom. Shane Haste or somebody, I think actually might have been um, Vanderpile. He signals for Miss Elizabeth to come over to the table. <laughs> Tied up perfectly so that once Betty English comes out of the bathroom, Here's your date. <laughs> oh, dude. We used to sick all the ugly and fat strippers. <laughs> and like if your buddy's kind of like, you know, like doesn't like a certain race, like if you don't like Asian, you don't like black people, like <laughs> you send those type of strippers over there all the time. Here, I'm going to pay for a dance. Yeah. <laughs> Took them up. <laughs> and he had the look on his face. He was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> And and we we can we again all we do is we turn the corner and we can see her dancing on him and he's like got this like fake robotic smile and he's just oh yeah you know trying oh, and that's then, funny and then uh, <laughs> I, I... <laughs> hold on no here comes the best part he comes back he's like you assholes yeah. as always how was it man he's like well she danced for me she asked me if I like it and I went oh yeah. <laughs> That's it. Macho you man like always think I always thought, like, when they line up the girls, like, he's like, you know, ladies and gentlemen, your showgirls. And they would name the, you know, I always thought of, like, a slave auction for some reason <laughs> in my mind. It, it was like a is. slave auction. Like, this is Princess Sherman, uh, Chappelle, you know, fucking, you know, these funny ass names. And then it's like, and then they would walk around, like, the walk of shame. Like, hmm. You don't want to make eye contact because <laughs> right. you're gonna, you know, it's not gonna hit you up. It's like, it's like buying a car. You know, it's like fuck. You don't want to look at the car salesperson. But anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take a break and we're gonna come back with some headlines. Okay, more booze and news. We'll come back. The Wheel of Death episode coming soon to booze. She got a dope. She about to make a hip swing all night long. Oh, na na. 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 Oh, na Maybe because he was doing the oh no it was um yeah something like that it was it, it, something with him you know it was that dice thing he said the dice thing he said that's all he does oh, the dice like, thing that's all that's all his game is really is the dice it's game the dice thing <laughs> but we're gonna do some headlines um Headline. first uh, bullshit headline here man arrested after selling farts in jars without a vending license that's ridiculous I almost didn't think it was a real story but I guess it is a real story. Uh, I wonder, like, <laughs> like who's his customer? <laughs> like, it's, like, hey, man, I got some fucking... St- I was thinking about, you know, bottling up, like, cocoa stinky farts. Like, how do you jar a <laughs> fart? Can you jar a fart? I mean, I guess you could, you know. Maybe, like, when you open it up, it's going to stink a little bit. Oh. Like, I, I knew some, like, people that really pissed me off that I was going to, like, ship them some shit. Like, a box of shit. Yeah, I'm waiting to go to somebody's house where I don't like so I can give them an upper decker. What's an upper decker? It's where you take a shit in the tank, not the bowl. Jeez. <laughs> Please tell me you haven't done that to my shit. <laughs> nah. You would know because what happens is is uh, every time you flush, uh, shit particles uh, come in with the new water. That's funny. Yeah. Ew. I mean, I mean ew. <laughs> All right. Police are uh, looking for the prowler who spent about three hours licking a, a family's doorbell while they slept. Um, that's a real story, and that was like on the, <laughs> that was on the fucking news, and he was licking the shit out of his fucking. Why? The store. I don't know. Maybe he was like high, and he's like, "Well, how many licks it takes to get to the center of the, the Tootsie Pop?" Oh my god! We thought it was like the clit or something for three hours. Yeah, who does that for three hours? Like your what? fucking tongue has got to be fucking. And you know, and for imagine so long. It, what if it, <laughs> the only what person if, I knew that licked a speaker like that was Happy Gilmore. I want to kiss oh, you yeah. all over. This was watching that last night, actually. 
Yeah, that's the only time I've ever seen anybody lick a speaker. <laughs> but just imagine it's a it's a ghetto doorbell, so it's got like you know exposed wires and shit, and no covering over it. What's your thoughts on that, man? On a guy licking a doorbell for three hours? I think he's like on he, drugs. Yes. Let's okay. Let's say that he just gets some sort of weird kick out of knowing that random people are going to be uh, pressing the door the doorbell where he licked. Now you do that for like ten seconds, you've gotten it. But for three hours, yeah, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's fucking really nuts. Like he must have been really, really high and like thought that he was like. I don't, and I don't think it's weed. Something that does that is like a fucking. That's like more you're on a fucking acid trip. Yeah. Or um, acid shrooms, shrooms, um, anything that's just really gonna uh, change the way you're viewing reality. Yeah. Like. You know, meth, me- meth and heroin, maybe, but like those things are not uh, meant to. Uh, you're not meant. To, you're not meant to be in a different world and do that. You know. Yeah, for sure. That guy's fucking a trip. I've done shrooms plenty of times. That's so fun. <laughs> I know somebody that done shrooms and was like walking in the orange groves nice. late at night in Redlands, and then fucking a bunch of Mexicans came out of fucking nowhere that worked in the groves just to see what was going on, mm-hmm. and it freaked him the fuck out. It's a. Uh... I remember one time I, I I drove on shrooms. That was a bad idea. <sighs> just just because you have to really pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, no shit. You can't, you know, in shrooms, you're going to see stuff. I remember I was uh, over with Sassy and Mrs. Sassy back when they lived in downtown San Bernardino. Uh-huh. And I just I was like, I'm going to do shrooms. I'm going to do it with them. So that way I have somebody who can make sure I don't end up, like, trying to jump off the roof. Yeah. But, uh. So, <laughs> lie detector <laughs> determined that was a fail. That's when Joe knew he fucked up. What happened is like I was staring at this poster of Kat Von D that I got them for Christmas. You know who that is right? Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm just like staring, staring, and then Richard goes, "Joe, what are you staring at?" And I just go, "Kat Von D's a bitch." Yeah, she and he, was. And he, yeah, she is. And you know, and then she also uh, he had those slippers that were like uh, the face of a lion, and you you put your foot through the mouth. I saw him do that. I'm all, don't do it, Richard. It'll eat your foot. <laughs> and he was just like, "You're really on one, aren't you?" So this is really good. Oh, that's pretty funny. Did you really see the lion eat his foot? No, but like in my paranoid head, that's that was going to happen is that he's going to put his foot in the slipper and it's hard. That's still pretty fucking funny. Yeah. All right, next t- headline is uh, Outback Outrage. A 28-year-old Florida woman has been arrested for allegedly attacking her parents because they wouldn't take her out to eat at Outback Steakhouse. Deputies say that she punched her mother and scratched your father in the face. <laughs> Have you ever been so pissed off that your parents you know, don't feed you the food you want, that she, that she would punch him in the fucking face. No. No, yeah, I but mean. But one time I got really mad at my mom because, like, I was like 15, 16. We were watching TV in the living room, and she was taking bong hits. Yeah. And then she decided to blow one in my face, and so I fucking grabbed the remote and threw it across the, the room and left. That's fucking disgusting. Let me blow my breath on you and see how you like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like fucking. Um, I mean, I've uh, my parents put me on a diet one time, and I was just fucking like young, and I was like, man, I'm so hungry, you know. Like I fucking was like damn near in tears. Like fuck it, like give me some fucking food. You know, when you get that hungry, you just start looking at the fucking animals, like you want to hunt them down and start fucking eating. I mean, it's crazy. But anyways, that's it for headlines. I I found a commercial. I want to share this with you guys at home. I was I uh, was at a gas station and I seen this commercial for Chevrolet. I mean, you know how these they have the real people commercials where they basically go over this shit. Yeah. So this one just fucking cracked me up. So I'll, I'll play it for you. Play it for you. Honda and Toyota owners together. To oh yeah, this one. Reliability. It's fucking funny. Who are the Ford owners? Me. Who's a Honda owner? And you guys have Me. Toyotas. Pretty, pretty reliable. Oh, we got Toyotas. To my whole family is Toyotas. Is the most reliable car company. No, it doesn't surprise me. Basically, everyone in my family has a Ford. Very reliable. Well, actually, it's not Ford. What? <laughs> actually, you guys are a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> Honda? No. Honda's reliable. Well, actually, Honda is not the most reliable. Sorry, Japs. <laughs> not Honda. Wow. What? Toyota. Toyota. <laughs> Watch I mean, what this guy says. Heart. Toyota is one of the best brands out there. It's actually not Toyota. <laughs> oh. I knew in my heart that 
Toyota was the best brand out there. This fucking tool. This fucking tool. Oh my god, it's Chevy. You have me bragging. Based on a recent nationwide survey, Chevy is more reliable than Toyota. Yeah, a survey my ass. Okay, so I found these commercials. It says, if real people, commercials, commercials were real life. And this, this Hi, is thanks for coming. Don't touch me, Pots. Can we go ahead and get it over with, please? Today, we're going to talk about quality. What does quality mean to you? Performance. Craftsmanship. Not a Chevy. Yeah. This year, Chevy <laughs> received more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than any other car brand. What do you think about that? It's really impressive, actually. I am surprised that it's Chevy. I have no idea what initial quality means. Initially, it's okay, but after that, it's just a piece of crap. Is that what you're saying here? <laughs> oh, did I mention that Chevy received more J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards than anyone else last year, too? Did you guys not win the Lasting Quality Award? <laughs> what did he say? Okay. The Lasting Quality. Oh, wow. wow. My goodness. Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's incredible. Who is J.D. Power? Because, I mean, honestly, it sounds like a porn star's name. <laughs> J.D. Power Hamla something, you know? <laughs> J.D. Power Broad. And the year before that. I like his accent. Oh, yeah. Door. Yeah. His name is Mark. Oh my god. <laughs> it keeps going. Wow, wow, doors, big doors opening and more cars. Who cares? And the year before that. <laughs> what? Okay, so I just Googled it and it's pretty much a made up award. Uh, initial quality is only for like the first 90 days. <laughs> in fact, Chevy has received more JD Power Awards for initial quality than any other car company four years in a row. Wow, I'm speechless. Did you guys rent this whole building out just to show off all the cars you couldn't sell? <laughs> I don't know why you guys keep inviting me. <laughs> I don't know why you guys keep inviting me. Yeah, that dude, that character's name is Mock. <laughs> it's, spe it's, spe it's spelled like that. There's like 10 commercials I'll, that he puts in. I want to see that. It's Mock. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're playing the first commercial, like, the fuck does this have to do with anything? Yeah. And you play that one, I'm like, oh, And then okay. the second one is pretty fucking funny. But like I said, it's just, um, <laughs> all these commercials are so full of shit. That uh, guy Mock. Mock. Yeah, but from anyways, Boston. <laughs> uh, that is the Booze and the Dudes <laughs> podcast. Uh, anything from you while we close? <sighs> Women, man. <laughs> Are you still hurt? No, actually, I was thinking about something else, actually. My right. my ex that I got that ticket for. Because oh. I, blo I blocked her. Hmm? What accident? No, not accident. Ticket. What ticket? The ticket I got that got me fucked in Pom Pomona, speeding through a red light. Oh, okay. I was just thinking because she started talking to me again, and I was like, "There's, I gotta end this." Like, so I blocked her, and like, I've been thinking about her every once in a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, fucking women are fucking up your head. Yeah. All right, where's mock when you need them? <laughs> All right, that's booze and the dudes. Make sure to subscribe, um, on all our shit. Like us, on like us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, like us in everywhere. Okay, we're gonna close out with the little. Yeah. Oh, I would prefer Bobby Roode. Yeah. Strength. Ain't nobody